In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the flooring I use to complete my sets when working with painted backdrops. At the risk of having some of my younger viewers proclaim, OK Boomer, I'm gonna tell you a story about my not so distant past. In 2004, I was hired to shoot the second presidential debate between John Kerry and President George W. Bush. When the challenger suggested that the president owned a timber company, he responded, need some wood? Fast forward to 2018 when I started working with painted backdrops and all of a sudden wooden flooring became very important to me. So I have some suggestions for you guys the next time that you need some wood, flooring. While a number of photography oriented businesses sell floor drops, most of them look very fake. The best solution that I have found is wall paneling from the hardware store. If you buy two four by eight sheets in each pattern, you can build a really great set that gives you depth and versatility. And then you can change the set out fairly quickly because all you have to move are two sheets of wall paneling. I store mine on top of each other on the floor or stacked up on the wall with my V-flats. Since most of my backdrops are about seven feet wide, if you found that maneuvering the four by eight sheets is too much, you could always cut them down about a foot, resulting in a four by seven foot panel. Originally, I tried getting by with just one sheet per pattern, but that proved to be really problematic. If I oriented the sheet so it came directly towards the camera, then I would have to fake flooring on the left and the right using content aware fill and it didn't always work out so perfectly and of course that took up time in post that was really just repetitive and wasteful when i used one sheet left to right i would end up having to put the model way too close to the backdrop which meant that there was going to be a shadow and the backdrop would possibly be way too bright so moving the model off of the backdrop onto a second sheet about five feet from it is far better because then I can control the color of the backdrop and cast the shadows where I want them to fall. The one that I use most of the time is called Weathered Barnwood and I bought it from Lowe's Home Improvement for less than $20 a sheet. If you were to look at it up close, you would notice that it's simply a printed image on an artificial wooden board. The other one I bought is called Gray Homesteader, and I also got it at Lowe's for $33.48 a sheet. It's a little bit pricier because if you look at it up close, the texture looks and feels real. Home Depot also sells similar products, but where I live in Chicago, the offering is not that great. However, when I was in Los Angeles, they had great options, so you might want to look into Home Depot as well. Now, if you feel that maneuvering these large panels is still going to be too much for you, there is another option. Hardware stores also sell packs of tongue and groove flooring. Now, you're probably going to need three to four packs in order to get the same amount of coverage, which will probably end up costing you more than the wall paneling. Now, there is one big drawback with these planks, and that is if you don't tape them to the floor or glue them together, they're probably going to move around a fair amount during the photo shoot and gaps are going to appear between the planks, which you will have to take out in post. And that's going to take up a lot of time. And that's the reason why I don't use them. Now, if you're hoping to use these planks on carpet, you're going to need some form of subfloor. The last time I did it, I was in a hotel and I had to use a series of folding tables. Of course, if this were my permanent studio, I would probably consider using sheets of plywood because it would just be easier and of course cheaper. Regardless of whether you pick the planks or the wall paneling, one key thing to keep in mind is that a light pattern will reflect a lot of light and that'll make it very difficult for you to create a dramatic and moody portrait. So if you're at the store and you see some great options, just pick the darker ones because those will be better for you. To be honest, the ones I have are probably a little too light, but they were the best options that I had. I have heard of other photographers who have stained their planks or their wall paneling, and so I might try that one day when I get tired of them, but we'll just have to wait and see. The gray one is definitely one that I would like to be darker, but I am sort of stuck with it for now. Anyway guys, I hope that all helped and made sense. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. And if you're watching this on Instagram TV, just know that I post these videos a day earlier to YouTube. 
And if you're watching these on YouTube, please hit subscribe so you can see more videos like this. Thank you guys so much for your time. Have a great day and I will talk to you soon.